Hi everybody! How are you all? I hope you're doing okay. So I am very excited to welcome my next special guest. I know lots of you watching are big theatre fans, so you are going to just love my next chat. Please welcome Queen of Musical Theatre, the wonderful and lovely Louise Dearman. Take a listen. Best question for you, Louise, is where does your love of performing come from? A nice big broad one to start with. Oh, it honestly, it's just been my whole life. It was just, you know, the age of three, I think I must have heard about a friend going to dance classes or seen it somewhere and said, I want to do that. And so, you know, my my mum and dad signed me up for some local dance classes and it just began from there. And it was honestly just a hobby. I obviously didn't think at that young age, oh, I want to be in musical theatre. I want to do this as a career. But um, yeah, I think as I then hit maybe 12, I started singing lessons and then I started to, I've always loved music. You know, yeah. people often say, I bet you're watching musicals all the time as a kid. And actually for me, it was pop music. It was yes. Whitney Houston, Celine Dion, Mariah Carey. And yeah. I just love big voices. And then I kind of just slipped into this musical theatre world. And I did Joseph at the London Palladium when I was 12 or 13. And I just, I think that was the biggest taste of, oh, what this could be like. And yeah. so I got, that is where my real love for musical theatre came in, where I suddenly okay. thought, this is this is amazing. You get to dress up, go on stage, sing your heart out eight times a week. And yeah, it was fantastic. So it's just as cheesy as it sounds, it's just in my blood to perform yeah. in some way. Um, and I've just slipped wonderfully into this world of musical theatre. Amazing. So you talk about your influences there growing up. Was it really those big pop icons? Yeah. Absolutely. And still, I'm always still like going back to just listening to them. I just loved, I just love voices. And I mean, my musical tastes change all the time. And I have quite broad musical taste. There is not one genre or one voice that I love listening to. It's, you know, people often are coming to me saying, oh, have you heard of this artist? And, you know, I loved R&B and, you know, proper old school R&B in the 90s and noughties and that was, I'd listen to loads, which was a surprise to people. But then I'll stick on Classic FM or, you know, Leanne Le Havas or John Legend and then switch to a band. It's just, it honestly, what I love about music is that it, go, it goes hand in hand with what mood you're in. Massively. It, weirdly, if you feel sad, you almost want to listen to that music that makes you emotional to get it out. Get it out. Or if you're feeling really happy, you'll like whack on a dance tune and be jumping around. But I just love the way it ignites memories and emotions. And it's that, you know, what would we do without music? Yeah, it, it almost can be a feeling like so, oh, so much so. And, and it's it's when you like you say, you play a record or something comes on and it just all of a sudden it fills you and you think, oh, my God. And it takes you back to that lake trip or that girls yeah. night out or that. And it's and it's like almost like a word association, isn't it? You you hear a song and it you go, that's that. It's very, very powerful. It's, you know, that's if I thing. hear and that's where <laughs> by the moon, if I hear that. <laughs> taken to my friend's birthday party and barbecue and I know exactly where I was standing and yeah. you know what boy I was probably trying to chat up or something I don't know but it <laughs> is so emotive it really is yeah and I think that's why it's so important you know to to listen to a wide variety of things you know I say that to the kids that I teach all the time you know they're like oh I love this artist and they get like obsessive about it and that, that's all they listen to and I'm like that's great but let's you know let's really look at all these other things and, and you're trying to influence them in that sense by bringing in all these different types of music and all yeah. all of a sudden they go oh my god that's so cool and I never thought I'd listen to that or those oh. kinds of things and you're like but it makes you it's like a, every piece of a jigsaw isn't it you know yeah. they're all one part and I think as well, which I, I say to lots of my students as well, I'm like, I understand your passion and love for listening to this artist and singing that type of music. Like, say, as an example, one of my students comes to me week after week with a very modern American musical theatre song. Um, and that's what her 
that's where she's in her comfort zone. That's where she feels her voice is at its strongest. That is wonderful. She yeah. knows her niche. But what I always say is you never, ever want to shut yourself off from an opportunity. So if you don't, if you don't work on another style of your voice, if you don't work on that, if you don't understand it, if you don't um, really sort of craft that authenticity and try to create that authentic sound, as an example, say you were going up for, I don't know, um, on the town, for example, yeah. and you need to kind of create that, that style of singing you can't go in there singing in your very modern musical theater mm -hmm. voice. you can't do that because it just doesn't tie up it doesn't marry up and then you make the decision as to whether you are shutting yourself from opportunities or whether you are opening the door to many things and I never wanted to use my soprano voice at college I was scared of it I didn't know how to use it I'd feel really nervous and then one of my singing teachers said I want you to come to opera class and I was like oh my goodness no that is not my thing and he just said it will just teach you your capabilities it will teach you how to yeah. use that and it was the best thing ever and now I don't fear soprano I love singing soprano I also yeah. love belting my head off and singing defying gravity so the fact yeah. that I've worked a way around doing both is hugely important and it's you know it's yeah. it's wonderful to know your niche and where your strengths are but also never ever forget everything else but also like you said it opens so much so many different doors for you and also it's one of those things where like you might have a song where you think oh yeah this is definitely a belty song but there's a bit in it where my belt just doesn't go up there I just can't get there mm -hmm. and I say to the kids all the time okay great so if we really worked on your your top the top end of your voice your head voice that that voice that you go oh no but it's really weedy and yucky and I don't like it let's work on that and then in six months time let's come back to this song and and then tell me that you can't do it and they're like, no, oh, no, Jen, I can't, oh, no. And, I, and I'm like, no, no, trust me, because I'm very similar to you. I had all these classical classes and I was like, at 16, I don't want to do classical singing. Ugh. Mm. You know, I was very much like, no, thank you. Now I am, couldn't be any more grateful because I'm teaching these kids songs that were not in my range at all. Yeah. But because I had those lessons, they're not something that I would sing, but I can teach you how to sing there because yeah. I can, do you know what I mean? And I, and I think massively grateful for it never shut yourself off from something that you think is not for you because if you don't try it you never know and also it, it could be the start of something wonderful yeah and you touched on there about um strengthening one part of your voice to help the other and I am the the master of blagging and mixing and I don't I have quite a full chest belt but it doesn't go as high as a, you know Define gravity requires me to go so I really had to learn the hard way by trying to basically shout it because I just yeah. couldn't get it and it, it was really giving me making my voice really lethargic and um I was sort of damaging my voice almost from just shouting 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 so I then learned to strengthen my soprano and then twang it up a bit open out the vowel sounds and People, but people who sing for a living, yes, they'd go, oh, that's what she's doing. But most people who just are enjoying the show and, and love a good song, notice. they're not going to go, oh, she mixed that instead of chest belted it. Are they really? Because personally, I do not care if something sounds great and if a performer is delivering a great performance and they are they are immersed in it and they are taking you on a journey with them. I don't care if they're mixing or belting. I don't care yeah yeah and also it's skill like you said you know the skill to be able to do that is better than somebody who like you say just whacks it and tries to get mm -hmm. somewhere that is just not it's just not working you know no and also if you're having a tired day what do you do when you can't belt it it's it's terrifying to be on stage and think I can't I'm not going to be able to hit that note in that place so at least if you have options there's a safety yeah. Yeah, for sure. So if you could describe your career so far in three words, what do you reckon you'd say? Um, unbelievable. Um, I say lucky and people go, oh, it's not luck. It, it, actually, it is. Of course, mm -hmm. of course, I understand that I have talent. I get that. But I have been lucky. I have been fortunate because I've been given opportunities. And when I look around me and I see loads of my friends who are hugely talented and not getting work or have really struggled to get work who are I'm no better than them yeah 
Um, so uh, unbelievable, lucky. Um, I'm just going to use those of like amazing, brilliant, those things. Um, I'm going to say varied. That's a really boring word. But I'm really <laughs> proud that it's been varied. I'm really yeah. proud that I've been in the ensemble, that I've been a swing, that I've been an understudy, that I've played small roles and big roles and character roles and meaty roles, gritty roles. Um so even though it's quite a boring word, I am immensely proud of the different characters that I've got to play over the years. Yeah, they're brilliant words. They're not boring <laughs> words. They're great words. They are no because it, it shows the journey that you've been on so far. I think yeah. you know, like you say, it's so important. A lot of the children that um, I work with will look at at people like yourselves and go, "Oh my god, they're just brilliant," and that's just amazing. And they're, they're just and you're like, "Yeah, but they didn't just fly there." No. <laughs> they didn't they didn't just you know they were where you were yeah 10 years ago 20 whoever that you know and, and <coughs> I think to open their eyes and 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 show them that actually it's hard work mm. it's hard graft but also you know to enjoy the journey of it don't yeah. try not to look at I want to get there there's where I want to yeah. get and I don't care what happens in between because the in-between stuff is for me personally the most important stuff mm. that's where you learn about you know your work ethic that's where you learn about your you know the friends that you meet and those relationships that that you form and 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 the fun times you know like you say of being in in an ensemble like the those moments of oh my goodness look at where I am yeah. please don't you know I try really hard to say to them don't wish your life away almost by going I want to get here and and I don't really care uh, how I get there but that's how and I'm like no every, let's look at that journey everybody's journey is completely different I was I did um, my friend Kerry Ellis's podcast. I mean, we Kerry and I knew each other from when we were 15 years old. We went to college together in the same year. We're really, really close. And we were chatting about this in her podcast, and she just said, you know, you've, you know, you'll say yourself, Louise, that you it was a really slow, steady climb. And uh, and she said very often because Kerry got a big break very, very quickly. And um, she said, I'd often think, come on, when when is Lou's big break going to come? And I was like, yeah. yeah, I was a bit like that, too. But actually, when I look back, I can see I can see the points that I'm going up the ladder to reach Wicked, for example. I can yeah. see those milestones in my career. And it is, I'd, I would always say to students, it's so rewarding when you feel like you've really worked damn hard for something. And there is, don't ever think that being in the ensemble or being a swing or being an understudy is less of a job than playing a lead role. By doing all of those things, and I've done all those things, I know that it's not. I know that it is all about everyone coming together to create a piece. And without one element, the whole thing crumbles. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah it's just be be don't be in a rush and you know be proud of taking those small steps to get to where you want to get to there's no shame sure. in that yeah absolutely so you talked a little bit there about being in a team what would you say is your favorite part about being in a cast oh it's the backstage banter <laughs> it's the best memories I think one of my favorite shows of all time was probably Guys and Dolls that I did yeah Piccadilly Theatre in London you know I mean we had Patrick Swayze in our cast it was just nuts amazing but we were sharing a dressing room I don't know there are about eight girls in the dressing room and every Saturday night we'd have like Claire Sweeney was in the show and she'd do champagne Saturdays after the show and and we'd just all get together on either the girls floor or the boys floor and all get nibbles and drinks and it was such a social wonderful tight yeah. cast um and that would transfer onto the stage because yeah. it, it's a, such a cliche to say this but you're you are a family you are there yeah. throughout rehearsals you go in every night people have their personal problems going on in their personal mm -hmm. life and you're all there to rally around and support each other to say come on get on stage you know dance your socks off sing out have fun and it takes away you know all those worries and I just remember it, it just being such a fun it's such a fun show anyway guys and dolls is my yeah. favorite of all time but it was just so much fun like I smile when I think about it I just yeah I, I loved it so so much and like you say there you can't actually pretend to be 
buddies on stage you know when people go oh yeah but you can you can see it everyone's been to see a show where they've gone it's just not I didn't you know go. <laughs> yeah yeah and like everybody's fabulous like you know you're not saying that it's but it, there's there's not that whereas when you go and watch something and you can see like the little twinkles between people and you can see like and also when you've been in a show you can see when you then watch them you can see when somebody's trying to pick someone else up when somebody's yeah. going don't worry I've got you today I've got you tonight this is yeah. okay we can yeah a great and, example that is like in in Wicked, Rachel Tucker and I, you know, we are still best of friends. I've been speaking to her just before this Skype. And that is a show where it's incredibly intense. You have a lot of pressure on your shoulders. You're really aware of this massive production and the pressure that comes with that. And of course, we are human beings. We are not robots. Some days you come in, you're either you're sick or you're tired or something horrible has happened in your personal life and sometimes you don't feel like going out there and you know you have to you know that that is your job you know that you have to give a good performance for the people who have paid so much money to sit and watch you and when you've got a partner partner in crime like yeah, Rachel, yeah. hopefully vice versa who doesn't even need to say who doesn't even need to yeah. say come on who steps out and they're almost like egging you on on stage yeah. And they give you, they give you like this, they set a bar and you have to, you have to reach it to give yeah. as much energy as them is massively important. But you're right, you yeah. can watch a show and, and also you can watch a show and see when someone's just not in it. And that for me is I get how hard it is, of course I do. But if you give a half hearted performance, it's absolutely going to show. And that is whether you are centre front or, you know, upstage left. It's oh, hugely. Yeah massively so talk us through some of your wow moments then you touched there about guys and dolls that just sounds like a brilliant brilliant time are there certain things that stick out in your memory is it more like about a show or rather moments or is it casts or you know what would you say are your wow moments and how do you think you depict them there there are so many honestly i sometimes like in times like this in lockdown you start to think nothing's happening I'm doing nothing I'm rubbish mm. nobody wants me you get all like that and then sometimes you just have to look back at what you've achieved and I think yeah you're right shows like um guys and dolls for that pure family vibe and the friends that I made and the the show itself and the you know the fact that I was in it in the ensemble and then I understudied then I got to play the role and then I went back years later to play the other role just the love for that um yeah Wicked was like just I, it's hard to put it in words but when I got that show when I got the call to say I'd got Glinda and it was just such elation it was yeah. I can't believe I, I can't I don't believe it's happening and that was the same when they called me about Alpha but I, I couldn't believe it I remember what I remember literally walking out of my cottage and there's like a big playing field right outside my cottage and I just walked out with my mobile on the phone to my agent and was walking around it I just left my house because I couldn't believe it was happening and of yeah. course playing both those roles was brilliant but outside of musical theatre since I had my little girl who's three now um I do want to do musical theatre again, but it has to be the right show and it has to be the right role because it has to balance with my family life. And yeah, I I love putting my kid to bed every night and I won't be able to yeah. do that. So it has to be something that I am prepared to fully invest in. Um, awesome. But I've I've carved a wonderful concert career and other highlights have been, you know, when when Josh Groban calls you and asks you to sing with him his tour, and at the O2 it is mm. again like um, I remember going on at the O2 and he is such a warm and generous and a humble man mm. you could not feel more comfortable on stage with another human being um that was just I was saying in my head I was going you're playing the O2 you're playing the O2 the actual O2 you're in the O2 <laughs> arena this is nuts so mm. it was just crazy so that was a highlight and then wasn't last year was it? it was a year before the year before I um the BBC asked me to open the festival of remembrance at the Royal Albert Hall for BBC one in front of the entire royal family and her majesty the queen that again talk about proud I mean yeah, yeah. my I thought my heart was going to actually come out of my chest I was like if you don't calm down <laughs> you're gonna a sing really badly and ruin me. Me, you're not going to enjoy it at all so I started playing the drums and my heart was like 
and I was really chill I was like oh but actually I was shaking like a leaf but I remember walking out and seeing the royal family sit down and then everybody else sit down and the drum starting and just going come on dear man enjoy this moment. you're ever going to enjoy a moment yeah there are listen there are so many but I think those just pluck out as yeah for sure amazing moments and like you said before about it being varied how varied is are those moments you know yeah. and that that just proves that that you have had such an extensive but varied you know career so far yeah. and and how wonderful those moments weren't always about being um you know front and center weren't always about being they were that they were the moments that almost made you feel we go full circle back to the music yeah. making you feel you know and that's Green. that's it sometimes I think people yes People kind of will say, oh, my God, I remember when you did that. Wasn't that brilliant? And because it's it's put on a pedestal and, and it looks to the outside world to be wonderful, not that you didn't enjoy it, not that it wasn't wonderful, but you're like, actually, there was a moment that nobody would think that was my favourite, but I yeah. actually really loved it when this happened. Yeah. Because, no, you know, no one no one else could feel what you felt and, and you can't help it. Sometimes, you know... The, the top dollar moments if you like are the ones that you're like yeah it was great but actually the job that I did that I a didn't think I was going to get b I didn't really know what I was doing and why I was doing it <laughs> you know sometimes they're the best ones the ones that you hype up can be not disappointing but you've hyped them up so much well I think you know you hit the nail on the head because everything that I've mentioned not wasn't because of the role I played and because it was the role was so wonderful they've all been wonderful in different ways it was definitely because of the the atmosphere and equally backstage as, as much as on stage and and I say this about Wicked a lot Wicked has changed my life and my career because it it just brought me my wonderful fan base. I, I, many people will be like, "Hey, excuse me, I was there from you know Jekyll and Hyde." Like I get that, but Wicked elevated my profile for yeah. sure. And I, and people say to me all the time, they they focus on Alphaba, but for me, Glinda was the first time I got the show. I was much more comfortable in that role. Um, yeah. It was just a bit of me, the comedy, the that type of singing. Um, Alphaba was of course incredible and mm -hmm. I will be eternally grateful to the producers and the creative team for even thinking Louise could do this because I would yeah. I say it all the time in interviews I genuinely would never have asked to audition for Alphaba so had they not come to me it wouldn't have happened mm -hmm. but I remember the pressure of it more yeah. than the role and I feel yeah. so mm -hmm. I really do yeah I wish yeah. I wish that I'd enjoyed it more so yeah. it's not about the role, it's about the experience, enjoying it. Just being in the industry is brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. So your advice for your younger self, do you reckon it'd be the same advice that you would give yourself now or slightly different? Um, I think, yes, it would be different because I think back when I was younger, it'd always be like, come on, keep working, keep pushing, keep driving, which is for me now in a way yes but I'm not a very competitive person I never have been yeah. um for me now it would just be will you just be a bit kinder to yourself and enjoy the experiences yeah because it, I just wish that I had just taken it all in a bit more and stopped thinking about being better doing better yeah. what's next you know what's happening with the next yeah. show and living in the moment a bit more and also you know as young performers we do beat ourselves up we pull ourselves to pieces we physically and uh, with our talent and mm. that is natural that's a natural part of being a human being but just try not to just try to be a little bit nicer to yourself and just enjoy it what else are we in this industry for if not to enjoy yeah. it yeah yeah and it, it's so weird isn't it because you fight so hard to get to where you are and then you don't enjoy it and you think well yeah. what's the point why, yeah. why, you know, why did I bust a gut? Why did I stay late every night? Why did I, you know, work and work and work and work and work? Mm. And then I'm on the stage. This is everything that I supposedly ever wanted. And now I'm not enjoying it. Yeah, it breaks my heart when I see students yeah. are so wrapped with nerves. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I get nerves and nerves are good. But mm. it's taken over your performance 
but like you can't stand there and go through that it's like putting yourself through torture yeah. so let's strip yeah. it back and have a look at why you're doing this you love it right yeah. you love it right? okay well, stop feeling yeah. judged by everybody and stop judging yourself yeah. just do yeah. your thing yeah and do you know what sometimes when you give yourself the acknowledgement that i i must be good enough because i'm here yeah i'm here and i must be good enough and there are going to be people in this audience that maybe don't think that that my performance was great today maybe think that so and so's played the role better but at the end of the day you've paid I'm, to watch me i'm here i've been employed to do this job you know you i always think the people that work you know maybe in a car <clears throat> showroom or in the hospital or in a supermarket do they every day go around going i'm definitely not good enough for this job no, definitely it's definitely weird. so it's you're like why We've spent our whole careers looking at ourselves in the mirror, looking at recordings back, listening to ourselves. It, listen, it is really hard. It's, it feels really personal. When you get a no from an audition, it feels personal. Yeah. It really does. And it's, you know, you can't please everybody. There are some people who will absolutely love my voice and there will be some people who think my voice is like dragging your nails down a blackboard. I can't please everybody. I yeah, just... No you can't it is physically impossible so just focus on the people who are enjoying it and focus on enjoying it yourself i'm trying to get better at that um yeah. and i'm 41 so it's like it takes a long time um yeah, yeah it is a hard one yeah 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 but like you say once you start kind of like telling yourself that that's you know the start of you going no more of this now it's silly because you know this is what you wanted to do so so just go out there and, and enjoy it yeah so you talked about duetting with josh groban are there any is there anyone in the world that you would just love to duet with they don't have to be with us anymore if there is somebody that um listen if barbara streisand or celine dion gave me a call and said lou i need a female <laughs> to duet with are you up for it? I'd, I'd think about it yeah i think well well uh I'm, my diary's quite full actually I could probably mm. re-record it on Zoom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! For me to have to be uh, next to some one of those two women, I remember going to see Celine Dion. I was very heavily pregnant, and we were uh, in the gods, so, like so far back and so far up. And I'd never seen her live. And even though I was right back there, I was like, "This is amazing!" And just yeah. And Streisand's just one of those performers that you know throughout my career um, yeah. and you know I've a couple of times been linked to her when people say oh you sound a bit like her now I'm like no I don't nobody sounds like Streisand no one yeah but I there's like yeah. a tone in a belt or something but I was yeah I would yeah what I'd give you never oh. know you never <laughs> you don't hey who thought we would be here two years ago so let's you know I hey exactly all the time a little known british theatre actress to sing along with um hey i'll be a backing singer for either of them oh my god okay. i'd be a groupie i'd stand on this i'd stand on the side selling t-shirts if i had to water water silly water that'd be me oh my god but i would just I wouldn't know oh, what to do because I'd think no, to myself, I mean gosh, are you going to let her walk by without saying anything? I know. Are you just going to try and be professional and not say anything? Oh, well, I don't know what I would do. I'm getting anxiety thinking of that. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? Because you don't want to appear weird and creepy. But also, you know, you're like, this is the only moment I'm ever going to get to, like, <laughs> say something and and you know we've all been there when we've been younger and we've met somebody or we've walked past somebody and you're like I didn't say anything f through yeah. fear of being an idiot and then thinking oh my god seriously because they must get it all the time but you're like <laughs> yeah I think Celine Dion is such a cool human being and I can't yeah. imagine she's so she seems so like I know her she just seems so funny that I cannot imagine yeah. her ever making someone feel stupid for saying no. I have just got to tell you that I have just been such a fan and you are one of the reasons that I sing like yeah. I can't imagine her going I, I haven't got time for this that was my Celine <laughs> she was kind of French kind of hey it was better than mine it's, <laughs> I'm not even gonna do mine 
No, and I think, do you know what, that's it. These people, you know, you put them on a pedestal and you, you kind of wonder, like, if you ever met them, what they would be like. But so many of them come across so natural and, and, and you know, very humble to be where they are because at the end of the day, they know that without people buying their records and going to their performances, yeah, they, they wouldn't, you know. Yeah. So, hey, there's hope yet. You This time next year, you and Celine, there it is. I love it. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> the idea of playing somebody who was who is or was a real person really daunting because I oh you've really got to get it right and you've really got to do that person justice and yeah yeah, I'd find that thing yeah I know I'd I'd love to but I don't think I ever would yeah I think I'd be like I'm sorry I just can't it's a lot of pressure isn't it and the thing is there's always family members that are like well actually she didn't do that or that's not what happened or I'd be like but again you've got to you've got to compartmentalize like we said before and just go I'm here because this is what I've been given to do and but yeah I'd be warm I don't (laughs) think I could pressure yeah (laughs) definitely if in the industry there are so many other jobs stage managers uh technicians if you could do a different job for one day within the industry what do you reckon you'd love to get your hands on and and go for easy wigs and makeup really easy I would love it I just love I just love the transformations I always just look at the wigs that people do and and style and just think that's amazing yeah but I mean you wouldn't think it today but I usually love playing with hair and makeup and yeah I would love that yeah I think I would have that beauty therapy had I not gone into this industry really? in fact I still might be training in one element of that just for the sheer hell of it because the interest oh, awesome. yeah but yeah wigs and makeup I did my friend's makeup for her wedding I do love doing it wow oh my gosh do that yeah that's amazing I guess it is still very creative isn't it you know it's it's still kind of like like I like the pampering element of it I like I like making people feel nice yes Wiggy's come in and do like my pin curls and my makeup I'll be like "Uh," it's like you're in a spa (laughs) and it kind of sets you up then doesn't it you're like I'm ready to go on stage I've got this this is great (laughs) I'm ready for nothing (laughs) yeah I feel a little bit too zen like a little bit too chilled out (laughs) okay you're hosting a dinner party what would be your theme and which five guests would you invite oh I always think about this question when people ask and then I never think about what I would say um what would my theme be um oh wow um oh I've got so many things running through my head, but I feel like I'm making them all up and they're not genuinely what film I'd want. Um, I think I would go quite... I'm just going to go... This is not exciting in the slightest, but I'm going to go like cocktail party, cocktail vibes, super glam, um, all just make our own cocktails and just get trolleyed. Um, And who would I have? I would have... um, I would have Celine Dion. I would have Ricky Gervais. Oh my God. I would have Adele. I would have. uh, Who else would I have? Who would I have? Who would I want to come along? I'm just going to think of all like the same, you same, same people. And then think, no, you should have said something intelligent and intellectual and brought somebody. In yeah, but if you're all going to get trolleyed. Attenborough, David Attenborough, just because I just love him. Who have I got? Yeah. Del Celine Dion, Ricky Gervais, David Attenborough. And. And. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Tucker. She will be buzzing. <laughs> she's loving her life. Drunk. She's very good fun. So she'd love it. Most, most people are. I have to say, I can't imagine David Attenborough drunk though. No, but he can just sit there and <clears throat> keep us in check and just be maybe knowledgeable. Whiskey or something. <clears throat> little whiskey. A little scotch on the rocks. I can a little see something. it. We can just all of us won't say a word. We'll just sit listening to David all night like that. It's just 
he's the type of person that needs to do audio books for everything i can't deal he's just his voice oh he's just and i we were watching one of his docs the other day and i said god what an achievement like uh, an yeah. entire lifetime devoted to his yeah. big passion yeah that's i mean i know and the thing is for me like the amount of people that he's inspired and the amount of organizations that he's you know worked with and worked for and set up and and you just kind of think oh my god you know you aren't making a difference just to people personally you're making a difference to the planet like that is for me i can't i just love him i i feel like he's everyone's granddad he kind of has he has like worldwide respect doesn't he yes yeah everybody knows who he is without like I mean who could hate David Attenborough you just can't do it can you no, I love I it love him. Instagram or something or Twitter or something and within something stupid like an hour even probably less he'd hit a million or something like that it's like just like what scramble away <laughs> <laughs> come on I love him. I do love him. What would be your go-to movie and snack if you were having a girls' night? What would you uh, want to watch, and what snack would you have? I love watching stand-up comedy. Okay. So I will very often say, let, just I don't know what I want to watch, but I know what I I don't know anything specific that I want to watch, but I know that I just want to watch some stand-up. So Sarah Millican absolutely cracks me up. So somebody like that. Um, and my go-to snack, a bottle of Prosecco. And I mean, I'm such a chocolate fiend. It's really a problem. Um, it is an issue. Like if there's something in the house, I won't rest until it's gone. <laughs> oh. it's, it's, I know it is. It, I think it is. Yeah, it is a problem. I, I get that. Or to have a square or two of chocolate and then put the rest in the fridge, I'll just know. Um, don't get me started on Cadbury's chocolate buttons because giant buttons, bye, you put them near me. Um, so either something like that or I like a little chip and dip, like a Dorito and a little yeah. guacamole thing. Let's That's go with- good. And that goes well with the Prosecco. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. So now all I want is Prosecco and Doritos, thanks. So sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> At- <laughs> Or on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> Why? It's Friday, Louisa. Come on. <laughs> it's Friday. It's Friday. And we've been in lockdown for nearly a year. The fact that that is not your total diet, I'm taking my hat off to you. Genuine. Like, come on. I don't know how I don't look like a twirl. Oh, a I fake know. Or... I'm serious. You know, like when you go to the shops and you go, I'll buy it for the kids. What a lie. Who are you having? Genuine. You walk down the oh, aisle and you're... you do what I do and you're like, a little packet of buttons. OK, I'll get you those. And then you get yourself something and you realise all along that the only reason you've gone there is to pretend that you're getting your daughter something so you can buy yourself something. That's the one. It's the worst thing. Yeah, I do it all the time. We're making cakes with the kids. You need a ingredient. You come out with like 15 things and you're thinking, hang fire. What happened here? Or the worst thing, you forget what they asked for because you were so consumed in the <laughs> fact that you were going for munchies. You know, you're like, woohoo! <laughs> worst. Oh, dear. Genuinely. I'm glad. Auntie of the year. Ah, oh, hey, I think we've done really, really well. We're actually having a sane conversation. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, I get very overexcited speaking to an adult um, in the day. It's, it's I know. It's it's madness. The amount of times I'll yeah I'll talk to another. But I'm like, oh my god, you're over the age you're of out there. fifteen. Hello. Hello. I know. Where are all the adults? <laughs> I know. I feel that. So lockdown. Tell me, what have you been up to? What has kind of like kept you going? Have you had any um, kind of events and things that you've been doing? Obviously, lots of stuff got postponed and cancelled. Mm-hmm. But were you able to do anything? Kind of like online has been the savior or the Satan, whichever you way you want to look at. Yeah, it. it's kind of weird how you think. You know, almost a year ago, I did my first lockdown Zoom um, or like not Zoom, like. Um, online streamed concert and it was yeah. so alien and so strange and now we're all very used to it 
Um, so I've done lots of things like that. I've done lots of teaching online. Um, I did a drive-in concert in London with Rachel Tucker, wow. which was brilliant. We had about 300 cars in a huge car park and a massive stage. That's very cool. Behind us, that was cool. Um, I got to do a Christmas show online and we managed to just for the second lockdown. Um, I recorded a Lullabies album. Oh, wow. Um, started it and I'd almost finished it before we went into the first lockdown and we were going to put it all on hold and I just said there's no there's no need to put it on hold I can record remotely we can still do this we can still finish it it's a downloadable only album um so it's and yeah I wanted to do it since having Willow and I just finally did it and it's stunning if I don't say so myself I think it's the favorite album I've ever done because it's all like brilliant lullabies but they're all linked you know, like meditation sounds like the ocean waves and the rainfall and birds linked with that so you get like a minute of the birds tweeting in the rainforest and it's yeah I'm so proud of it it's gorgeous and there's two original songs on there one written by me one by Scott Allen um amazing. yeah and it's called bedtime baby and so I did that that was amazing um I've done a, some script readings of new work, which has been really lovely. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's that's about it, really. Hey, that's amazing. I, isn't it difficult? Some days you just want to stay in bed. Netflix yeah. looks like the <clears> best <throat> option. But you know what? To be able to have that motivation every morning to go, I, I am going to get up to do said thing. Right. I am going to. Yeah. You know, I think in, in itself, it, you know, it doesn't happen to everyone every day. But, you know, when you've achieved something like that, I think that's one of the biggest things for me personally during lockdown that I will massively appreciate once we finally get out of this is the little things. Because yeah. once you can once you're in a pandemic and you can't do anything, those little things become massive. Yeah. So then when you get out of lockdown, you think, do you know what? I can I can shoot for anything here because look at what we achieved during <laughs> literally the worst time anyone could have imagined yeah you're right and it is about also taking like work aside from work it I'm not so I'm not so much so keen on it in the winter months but you know in the summer with the first lockdown it was awful but to get out every day for just a walk and to kind of live the simple life a little bit um I really enjoyed that and to have us yeah. all together I, I quite liked that because it you know it made you think amongst all the horrible stuff there is some some good moments yeah there is some light and I think that's the other thing you know trying to pinpoint pinpoint those light moments in mm. in this this horrendous like chaotic awful time and and I think that's the thing you you feel so blessed for the things that actually you thought I can't believe that day to day I just just shunned it I just didn't yeah. even think about think about this what's next for you what do you hope for in 2021 2022 <laughs> please 2021 um I want to get back to doing what I do obviously there's been yeah. so much really exciting work that's been cancelled um but for me as well I I want to sort of explore new avenues so you know things that I've never really got to do um I've been working on some writing ideas and some other projects that combine being a mummy with being a performer um and more recordings and some straight acting as well I'd really love to do some straight acting tv listen I'm not talking about going and playing a massive main part in a tv drama but again it's like almost starting from scratch for me if I were to do that yeah. You know, I'd be happy with a couple of eps on something, quite frankly. Um, some stuff like that. And, yeah, just kind of mix things up a bit. Um, yeah. Interesting. And, and I think it's good to have new goals because yes. we get very settled. And then one thing I've never done is sit waiting for my agent to call. I've been with the same agent for over 20 years. And we have a great understanding. But he knows that I will never sit waiting for him to ring me with a job. I'll be out there going, right, how can I continue to be you know you know productive and creative and, and keeping myself out there but also keeping myself sane and keeping my mind going yeah. um so yeah I think as much as I want to do what I do and just be performing and singing obviously I want to really yeah. <clears throat> I want to really use this year in particular 
to continue in the same way that I got the Lullabies album done to continue with my other projects and make them happen yeah yeah just just make them happen I really am massively thankful so thank you so much for chatting with me today you're so welcome it's been lovely and a lovely afternoon thank you you. I'm going Doritos now you can I promise you can go and watch Sarah Millican have a brilliant time with you with your chip and your dip I I do have my child to pick up in an hour so maybe not such a good plan but maybe a few hours yeah when she's gone to bed have yeah a, have, have a wonderful evening no truthfully I'm really really thankful thank you so much because I know you know everybody has their own stuff going on and you you create your own schedule don't you and and people yeah, say yeah. oh you, you you know you're not doing this work and you're not doing that work but you fill your time with work you yeah. fill your time with projects and jobs and stuff and sometimes you know you get an email and you're just like oh god really okay yeah. okay <laughs> Okay, I'll do it. No, I, I am hugely thankful and have a, I've had a lovely time. Me too. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're so welcome. What I'll do is I'll send you the link when it goes up um, on the channel anyways. And oh. um, I would love to I would love to chat with you again some other time. Absolutely. When I've got something much more exciting to say. <laughs> maybe when I've done something. Maybe after my duet. <laughs> then we'll talk. Yeah. About- uh, I mean, well, you know, we know that's going to happen now. We've, we've, we've written that in the sand and it's there and you're just waiting on the call. It's fine. Universe, yeah. I have that. Love it. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and I will end up being her PA and carrying the water and it's all good. I mean, we've we've worked on that one. She's good. <laughs> Got this. <laughs> we have. Take care of yourself. Thank you so much. And I'll Thank speak you to you again soon. Take care. Bye. Take care, bye. Thank you so much, Louise. I had such a wonderful time chatting with you and all my very best wishes for 2021. Thank you all so much for your continued support. I really hope that these interviews are making you smile. That is all that we can ask for. Take care and I'll see you next time for another fantastic guest.